I'm Ethan Colliver Dio, and I am doing a research project at the University of Utah to see if osteopathic manual techniques can decrease the time it takes for patients' bowels to start functioning normally after having a hemicolectomy. Three techniques are designed to normalize the function of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Three techniques will be done on selected patients twice a day in the morning and in the afternoon and all techniques can be completed in 15 minutes. Technique number one is suboccipital release. It is designed to release the soft tissues of the atlanto-occipital joint. It is also designed to normalize the parasympathetic function of the vagus nerve. Technique number two is rib raising. It is a deep tissue massage at the costovertebral junctions of T5 to L2 bilaterally. It is designed to normalize the sympathetic nervous system function to the bowels. Technique number three is lumosacral decompression. It is a soft tissue myofascial release of the lumosacral region. It is designed to normalize the function of the pelvic parasympathetics that give parasympathetic control to the distal bowel. All three techniques can be done on a patient that is supine in bed. They may have the head of the bed elevated for comfort if need be, and they may be intubated in the ICU and still have these techniques done safely. We do not do the techniques on patients who have had open sores, wounds, or fractures, or known metastatic disease for patients under the age of 18. Let me demonstrate the three techniques. So for release is done with the patient on their back. Locate the patient's inferior nuchal line and place your finger pads just distal to it closer towards your neck, bilaterally. You want to do firm anterior pressure towards the patient's nose and attempt to get as close as you can to the atlanto-occipital joint. At the same time, add distraction towards you as well as external rotation of your fingers and attempt to spread the soft tissues of the suboccipital triangle. Hold for two minutes and then release. Again, this can be done with the patient's head of the bed up if needed for comfort or while the patient is intubated. For rib raising, we're going to do rib raising along the costovertebral junctions of the T5 through L2. To locate T5, First find the spine of the scapula and the inferior angle of the scapula. Mm. Inferior angle is at T7 and the spine is at T3. Go towards the spine's processes and then reach towards the middle and you'll be on T5 spinous process. The costovertebral junction is approximately four centimeters away from the spinous process and you'll see a gutter of the soft tissues just lateral to the transverse processes of the thoracic vertebra. I'm going to demonstrate on the patient's left side that will be closest to me uh, with my fingertips on T5, T6, T7, 8, 9, and T10. So I roll the patient away from me, locate the inferior angle of the scapula and the spine, go towards the middle of those to locate T5, place my fingers underneath the patient, and roll them back on. Move your finger pads around until you are firmly on rib. They will be hard and 
You should feel them clearly underneath your finger pads. Place strong anterior pressure towards a person's chest and hold for approximately 90 seconds. Then, after 90 seconds, we will then treat T11 through L2 in the following manner. Roll towards me. We will approach from the bottom, and the top of the iliac crest should be approximately at the L4 vertebra. Find the spinous process of L4, and then go up approximately two spinous processes. That will be L2. Again, place your finger pads in the paravertebral tissues of L2 and L1, where there are no ribs, but the sympathetic chain will still exist there. The next finger should be on the costovertebral junction of T12, and subsequently um, in your top hand should be on the costovertebral junction of T11. It's okay if your fingers are still on T10 and T9 in your top hand. Um, no harm in doing a little extra treatment if you want. Roll back over. Again, roll towards the camera. I then locate L4. Go up two spinous processes. Have the patient roll back. And place my finger pads in the paravertebral tissues or on the costovertebral junction themselves. Again, strong anterior pressure and hold for 90 seconds. Third technique is lumbosacral decompression. Again, you want to decompress the lumbosacral region. If you go have the patient roll away from you and locate their posterior superior iliac spines, which if you go immediately medial to them, you will be at the inner space between the fifth lumbar vertebra and the top of the sacrum. That is a lumbosacral region. Your bottom hand will cup the patient's tailbone or sacrum in the same orientation as my hand right now, with the fingertips right at the lumbosacral region. Your top hand will go on the spinous process of L5, L4, and L3. And we will now show this with the patient on their back. Roll away, please. and roll back over. Okay. Make sure the patient's pelvis is firmly on your hand that's on the sacrum. When you have your hands in place with your bottom hand on the sacrum, let your hand completely relax and then slowly cup the sacrum. This should not hurt your bottom hand and you should not be straining against the patient's weight no matter how heavy they are. You then want to anteriorly tilt your fingertips of your bottom hand as if you're holding a bowl in this direction. That's called flexion of the sacrum. And then you want to do gentle distraction of the sacrum. All at the same time, gently resist with your top hand, again on the spinous processes of five, four, and three. Hold for two minutes and wait for tissues to relax in this area. 